Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, as part of our Derbyshire tour, I want to show you two fabulous places. Matlock Bath, which as you can see from the picture here, is extremely picturesque. And another part of the Derbyshire Dales, a little village called Eam. It's spelt E-M, E-Y-A-M, but it's Eam. And this is also known as the Plague Village. Enjoy the vlog. Now, if you're visiting Derbyshire at any time, Matlock Bath is an absolute must. Check this out. So it really is the most picturesque town. I'm told they call it Little Switzerland. and the people you come across when you're on your walks. Well, you might be wondering how Matlock Bath got its name. Well, I'll tell you in a second. But first, I'm about to cross over the Jubilee Bridge. This bridge was built in 1897, and it's seen many thousands of visitors cross the Derwent River to the fantastic historical park on the other side, which is where I've just been, where there's also an aptly named Lover's Walk. Lots of high pass up the cliff faces and children's play areas. And yes, I was over at Lover's Walk on my own, but Helen would tell you that's because I love myself the most. So back to the name. Well, the health spa of Matlock Bath began much earlier than the Victorian times, and it was in 1698 that three medicinal springs were discovered. The first bath was devised and constructed, made of wood and lined with lead, and it was this particular bath which gave Matlock Bath its name.
Now, Eam is about 13 miles from Matlock. Uh, the road there meanders through the fabulous Chatsworth estate, so plenty to view on the way there. And the small village of Eam in Derbyshire lies also between Buxton and Chesterfield. It's just north of Bakewell and it's in the Peak District. Now, typically rural, most of its population were farmers, and in the early 1660s, it did not stand apart from any of the other numerous villages that lined the trade routes from London to the rest of England. And yet, in 1665, Eam became one of the most significant villages in the whole country. The actions of its 800 inhabitants had far-reaching and important consequences for the development of the treatment of the Great Plague. Now, the plague arrived in Eam in late August 1665. It came in a parcel of cloth sent from London to the village tailor, Alexander Hadfield. When Hadfield's assistant, George Vickers, spread the cloth out by the fire to air, he found it was infested with rat fleas. He died a few days later, with his burial being recorded in the parish registers on the 7th of September, 1665. The pestilence swept through the community. Between September and December 1665, 42 villagers died, and by the spring of 1666, many were on the verge of fleeing their homes and livelihoods to save themselves. It was at this point that the newly appointed rector, William Mompesson, intervened, believing it his duty to prevent the plague spreading to the nearby towns of Sheffield and Bakewell, he decided the village should be quarantined. On the 24th of June, 1666, Mompesson told his parishioners that the village must be enclosed, with no one allowed in and no one allowed out. He said the Earl of Devonshire, who lived nearby at Chatsworth, had offered to send food and supplies if the villagers agreed to be quarantined. Mompesson said if they agreed to stay, effectively choosing death, he would do everything in his power to alleviate their suffering and remain with them telling them he was willing to sacrifice his own life rather than see nearby communities decimated. The decision to quarantine the village meant that human-to-human -human contact, especially with those outside of the village, was basically eliminated. Now, without the restraint of the villagers, many more people would have more than likely succumbed to the disease. It is remarkable how effective the isolation was in this instance. August 1666 saw the highest number of victims, reaching a peak of five or six deaths a day. The weather was remarkably hot that summer, which meant that fleas were more active and the pestilence spread unchecked throughout the village. This same month, Elizabeth Hancock buried six of her children and her husband close to the family farm. They had all perished in the space of just eight days. The Hancock's children's graves are in an isolated location just to the east of the village. Interestingly, Matt Hancock, Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, is a direct descendant of the family. In his letters, the Reverend Mompesson described the smell of sadness and death in the air. He also wrote about his wife, who attended to so many of the dying, contracting the plague while helping others herself. On the 22nd of August, 1666, they went for a walk in the nearby hills, and Catherine spoke about the sweet smell in the air. She died the following morning at the age of 27. Local historian Mr. Thompson said, who would have thought they would have agreed to do that and put themselves and their families in mortal danger, which is what they did, so much so that at least a third of the population of the village died. They knew they were risking life and limb, but they still agreed to do it. If it means anything at all, you almost feel responsible to do something to remember it. And there is an onus on the people in the village that you can't just turn your back on what the people did. And really, that's why Eam is such a fabulous place to visit. The history lives on, and all around the little village you will see plaques of where people lived and died, and they keep the story of the plague alive. So Eam is not just about the plague, obviously the history is the history and that's what it's famous for. But it's a great day out, lovely pubs, 
Uh, a lovely tea room there as well. If you like walking, plenty to see. There's a museum. Of course, it all centers around the history of the plague, but there's much more to it than that. So if you're in Derbyshire, if you're anywhere near Matlock or Chatsworth, find time to visit the village of Eam. It's fascinating. And in the village center, they've still got the old stocks. And apparently if you've been bad, been up to no good, you'd end up in the stocks. And they were a form of public humiliation. People would gather around in crowds and throw stuff at you. Helen threatened to put me in there. Anyway, folks, hope you've enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for joining us on our little Derbyshire tour. If you've enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment. And if you haven't done so already, we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.